Their names are Katya, Mike, Peter, Eva, Andrew, Gail. They live in Quebec, Paris, Berlin, Hong Kong, or New York. Their computer is their best friend, their window on the world, their confidant. I don't know what to add except that I'm tired of this fucking video. Oh, the motherfucker doesn't work. I can't even talk. This is crazy. I'm crazy. I'm nuts. Yeah, I'm insane. They were born with a mouse in their hand and the internet in their cradle. Equipped with webcams, these teenagers film and expose themselves on the web. It ranges from the kitschiest choreographies to parodies of their favorite videos. Imitation of their superheroes, glorification of fights, firecrackers between buttocks, nothing can stop them. Simulated violence or real deterioration. Exhibitionism or provocation. One thing is for sure, the revolution is going on, it's their revolution. For Thomas and his pals, a Saturday afternoon begins like this. It's 2 p.m., their first challenge of the day. They call it Deuteram. Hold on. You need a little more momentum. My head is spinning. Does it hurt? It hurts a bit. Let me see the video. And of course, they film everything. It's even their main motivation. That's a good video. 3 p.m., their second challenge. Wait a second, take a little run up. Throw it against the portal over there on the left. Go ahead. All right, Kubi? Yeah, I'm okay. This is for you. If we hurt ourselves, we laugh. It's funny to put yourself in danger. Normally it's forbidden, but we don't care. We're a pack and we do it. First, we do it for fun. It's a hobby. 4 p.m. Thomas is wounded, but he's asking for it again, so his pals put some mustard on his wounds. Yeah, these are burns, but it's nothing. Go gently, please. Fuck. Stop it. It's burning. Shit. Hurry the towel. 
The scars are like trophies for us. We play with fire. Each time we come very close to serious wounds. 4.30 p.m. It's time for a snack made of mustard, Tabasco, vinegar, with a touch of strawberry cordial. You won't throw up if you suck in from your nose. Wait, I'm not ready. Are you ready? Make some space, I can't see anything. <coughs> Often the one who pukes is the winner, otherwise it's the one who sucked in the most. We challenge each other to see who is the bravest, but we don't take it too seriously. For example, we ask him if he's capable of throwing himself out of a balcony. If he's capable, he does it, and if not, he doesn't. It gets me away from my parents because they're not there to see what I do, but if I ever get caught for a stupid thing by the cops, then it will turn sour. Actually, we provoke our parents to show them what we are capable of doing. It's 5 p.m., escalation of stupidity. They head for the local old people's home. Hello, we are here for a survey. It's a survey for TV. What is this about? Did you like it, madame, or not? No. Well, thanks anyway. <laughs> After their trip in the rooms, a little visit in the residence reception. They were laughing, I could hear them laugh. Some were shocked. I thought some of them were already dead. Yeah, I freaked out when I saw the old ladies' faces. There's no limit. In front of the camera, we're more courageous. If one day we really hurt ourselves, then we'll quit, but generally there's no limit. The idea is to show that we're bullies. <laughs> 6 p.m. Thomas goes back home. His priority is to put his videos on the net. Thomas has created the website for his group called the LBP, standing for Professional Wankers, and it shows his videos. 20,000 people have already seen them. An unexpected success. There's a good turnout. I was impressed. It makes me want to continue because it seems to work out. It makes me want to continue. But the extreme and even sadomasochistic stuff of the LBP weren't born from nothing. They draw inspiration from Jackass, a cult MTV program which claims stupidity as a form of excellence. The idea of self-mutilation comes from jackass. If I hadn't seen their videos, I wouldn't have created the LBP. Even if they do better than us, we won't try to surpass them, otherwise it will be complete madness. We'll break our arms, we'll kill ourselves. On the internet, I saw a guy who climbed up the brick wall and he stood up like this, and then a car gathered momentum and ran into the wall. The guy was ripped open. He wanted to do better than jackass. Well, he did better, except that now he's in a coma. 6.30 p.m. Thomas' parents rush in to watch his films. Oh, oh. you broke my eggs. Then I lick his head afterwards. My God, indeed, it's really stupid. I don't believe it. 
Or there was even garbage in there. This is nonsense. This is the most popular video. In the beginning, I was afraid it might go as far as death, in fact. So I was very much afraid. But still, I'm not going to say, Thomas, don't do that. If I tell him, Thomas, you might hurt yourself, he won't listen. That's the idea. The idea is actually to show a bit of eccentricity and gut somehow, but I think he's becoming more mature. He's growing up. I think they also do it to provoke. Inevitably, they want to provoke society and show that they exist. Thomas has tens of videos like this one on his website. He wants to show his achievements. When you're ready to be filmed, doing big stupid things, you actually change your personality. It actually feels weird. It feels as if I had a second identity. When I'm outside, I can go towards people and make stupid things before their eyes, whereas in daily life I can't because I have a block. There are things about myself that I would like to change, but with my second personality, when I'm outside with others, I'm less timid and more courageous, whereas in real life, I'm timid sometimes. You don't know it, but I'm a witch. I do magic. At the count of three, I will disappear. One, two, three. Since childhood, Laura and her sister live like Thomas and his pals under the eye of the camera, except that their mom is behind the camera. She films everything. The first drive, the sisters' wild behaviors, a Christmas evening under the snow. This is for video gag. Do a little pratful, please. I don't want to hurt myself. And for their first time in a nightclub, Mum is also there to immortalize the moment. But the most precious pictures are those where Laura sings. Because for her mother, there's no doubt, Laura is a star. So inevitably, when Laura's on stage, Mum wouldn't miss that for anything. In reality, it's another story. Like almost every morning, it's past midday when Maggie goes upstairs to wake up her girls because Laura and her sister have left school and they don't have a job. <laughs> Sweetheart, look, you have three missed calls. <laughs> Out! It doesn't work. School is not their thing. Laura quit when she was 16 and Eva followed her. They better stay at home rather than having the schoolmaster calling every five minutes to tell you to come pick up your daughter because she did a stupid thing. I prefer they stay at home. There's absolutely nothing I can do. They chose their way. They chose to quit school, stay at home, hang around. And now that's the result. In that case, if you want to do housework, then do it, or get married to a rich man, or become a little star, but there will still be work to do. You must work hard. Become a star? For the moment, she only shows her talent to her sisters and friends. I'm not interested in anything except singing, singing, making photos and so on. I tried school, I tried traveling, I tried 
Uh, in sales, I tried babysitting, I like taking care of children, but you don't earn your living with that. At 6 p.m., like every day, Laura, her sister and her friends are glued to the TV set. There's nothing that could make her miss the Star Academy TV program. I watch their classes, how they learn and so on. They wake up early, they go to sleep at 4 a.m. Sometimes I watch them at 4 a.m. Some of them are still awake. After 8 a.m. they're up and they have dancing classes until the evening. And I don't know how they manage to stay up. One year ago, Laura auditioned for the Star Academy. She failed, but she wants to try again. It's great to be a star because you go out, you've got money, you have fun, you're on TV, you're famous, but at the same time you don't have any private life. It's not my goal to become a star. My goal is to make money. I go where the money is. And to help Laura in her career, guess who works behind the scenes? I'm the manager. I know she can make it, I'm sure of it, that's clear. She looks the part, she has stage presence, she sings well, she has everything it takes. I don't want her to have a hard time. I told her, Laura, one day I would like you to open your purse, buy yourself what you want, avoid hard times like I had, please. I told her, do what I couldn't do, do it. You're young, you have an opportunity, just do it. There remains an important question. How does one get noticed by a record company? The sesame door is the internet. This is where Laura and her mother put all their hope to reach success. And her mom is in charge of putting the videos online. She already has little fans. She has little fans. Oh, Laura, I love this song. Oh, Laura, you sing so well. Now I'm your fan. I think it's cute. I like it. Fans on the internet who write to her and encourage her. Crystal, nice voice. My word, you're a star. Do you remember when you said, oh, that's nice? I never get tired watching you every morning to start the day in a good mood. It's better than a coffee or a good chocolate. I like this comment. I also like the messages of encouragement, because each time people send comments, you want more. For Maggie and her daughter, the rest of the story is written. Star Academy, phone call from a producer, a dream which could take Laura on the other side of the mirror. Thomas, the jackass follower. Laura, the virtual star. Two teenage stories of today, among million others. <laughs> stories typical of a generation whose motto could be, I surf on the net, therefore I am. His name is Clément. He's 17 and he surfs the net as well. He lives in Torcy, in a Parisian suburb. And every evening when he comes back from school, it's the same ritual. I plug it in, I have to do it, it's my computer, and then I connect my MP3, which is connected to my Hi5, which is connected to my USB plug. Screen, webcam, mouse, like a real cyber teenager, Clément, is overconnected. In his bedroom, no TV set, no radio, no books, no magazines. He doesn't need that. 
Anyway, everything is on the internet. Everything which is related to me and my life is on the internet. I'm mostly interested in girls' music and extreme games. I like everything which is violent. For example, this mad heavy metal called Christian Core that Clément listens to for hours. The videos I watch the most are the very underground stuff, like in cellars or warehouses. He also identifies with his idols, with the secret hope of becoming a rock singer one day. Eleven p.m. Clément is still in front of his computer, but this time it's a different program. It's not my fault, it's just that the internet is full of porn stuff. I watch videos especially with pals most of the time. It's a way to pass the time when I'm bored to death. It's a guy's thing. But chicks now draw inspiration from it and guys as well. The internet is also the ideal place to chat up. With his webcam, Clément chats up tens of girls. Oh, elle est moche. Oh, she's ugly. Oh, est moche? oh you're so ugly. Horrible. It's horrible. Oh, qu'est-ce que t'es moche? Some chicks contact me like this because they think I'm cute. But why am I chatting with her? This is over. Now I've just blocked that chick and I'm going to delete. Among hundreds of virtual chats, Clément does his shop. I look at what she listens to, how she dresses, her haircut, what she likes, where she lives. If it suits me, I talk to her. If it doesn't, I go to another page. Actually, I make a selection, like for the rest. I take what's best. Sorry, but you don't take a Clio when you can get a Mustang. In these conditions, it's easy to think you're a playboy, so Clément doesn't miss his opportunity. It's easier for me to meet them on the internet because outside I'm quite timid. Thanks to the net, I'm open. I have been able to meet chicks of my taste. Before going on the internet, I never went out with chicks. I had no experience and now... That's it. Hey Mike, it's been so long since I've seen you and I really, really miss you. There's always something for you. I love you, baby. For virtual chatting up, girls are under no obligation. Strip teases before the webcam, they get each other in a frenzy of excitement. That's the advantage of the internet. Watch what these chicks send me. And then they say I have no feelings. Come on, did you see what these chicks send me? Even these pictures are too much. Cyber sex is growing so much that organizations launch preventive campaigns like this Dutch film. In his daily life, Clément dreams as he listens to his favorite singers. But we are far from the life of a rock star. Every morning he has a one hour and a half bus commute to go to class in a technical school in a small town called Trem. Here Clément learns to become a ceramist. I had to find something. I learned this first job to get some money because it's quite difficult to make money with music. It's more a passion than anything else. And with his pals from school, Clément doesn't always feel in his place. We like him the way he is. It feels weird to see that. It's quite rare to see a person dressed like that. It changes us from the routine, especially his white locks, it's weird. That's how you recognize him, you know it's him. They make fun of me because I don't dress like them, I don't listen to the same music as them, because I don't have the same frame of mind, because I'm the extreme type of guy. 
But he doesn't care because his friends and his community are on the internet. Back from school, he logs on to his favorite website, MySpace. A website first created to promote unknown artists and which was taken over by teenagers. It's become their favorite meeting website. To attract others, millions of young people proudly show their pictures, their tastes, and their virtual friends. I look for people I can relate to because I feel alone in my neighborhood in the depths of the suburbs. On the web, he has more than 1,900 friends and each day he gets new contacts. I have contacts, friends over Paris, acquaintances, and then I have Americans, Canadians. MySpace, a website which gathers more than 100 million users and where young people from the whole world spend so much time. This website has just been bought out for $600 million. It attracts more than 300,000 new members each day. A study has just shown that in Europe, one-third of teenagers like Clément regularly watch porn films. We head for Hanover in Germany. It's 11 p.m. At first sight, Yasmin, this young girl surfing on the net, looks like a normal teenager. But look at what she admires. Pictures of models retouched to get these cadaveric figures. Yasmin is anorexic, and her secret dream is to look like them. When I look in a mirror, I feel like slapping myself, because I neither like my face nor my body. It's unfair. Why are there people more good-looking than others? Why are there people more confident than others? That's the way it is, you can't change your look. However, changing one's look is Yasmin's obsession, but she doesn't talk about it. The only person she dares confide in is Julia, an anorexic like her that she met on the internet. Julia wished to remain masked because she hides her illness to her family. As long as hunger isn't unbearable, I don't eat a thing. And when I can't resist it, I only eat vegetables or fruits. Only food which contains no calories. Each time Julia and Yasmin meet again, they take refuge in the library's computer room. This is where they go on their favorite websites, the pro-ana, meaning pro-anorexia. On these websites, anorexic people from the whole world gather. Without being aware of the danger, they are fascinated by these unbearable pictures. I discovered the pro Anna sites at the time when I was really fat. I really felt bad about my body, it made me unhappy. I thought it can't be possible that I'm the only person on earth who feels that. With the girls who are members of the pro Anna website, we understand and support each other. We can shamelessly write, I didn't eat anything today. And when we've held on without eating anything, we're proud of ourselves and other girls are glad to hear it. The online forums of the pro and our websites challenge their own members by inciting them to hold on, even if it means starving. Zum 
Beispiel, wenn die Beine sich nicht berühren. Und I like it ja, when legs don't touch halt each other, because it proves that there's almost no fat left. Ja, fett vorhanden ist. When you can und, see the bones um, as well, it indicates ja, that there's halt almost nothing left. So and that's our ja, goal. Dass da wirklich kaum noch was ist. Und, when we look at these das, pictures, we think, you too, you could look like that. So You're on the right track. Aussehen, it's not time to give in. Du bist auf dem besten Wege, du willst jetzt nicht kaputt machen. On this online forum, Julia and Yasmin write their ideal weight, 45 kilos, the number of calories they ate the day before, everything. Wenn ich jetzt im ja, traurigen Zustand When I feel really was, bad, I write and suddenly each sentence is a relief. Es ist halt mit jedem Satz eine Erleichterung. Basically, I write about und, what um, gives me a heavy heart. Es ist halt so, wie wenn man sich das alles von der Lesung I don't really expect thousands ja. of people to Bede answer me, but basically, halt. I admit it's a sort of call for help. Jetzt mir tausend Leute schreiben oder so, aber es ist schon eine Art Hilferuf. These websites are an outlet for Julia and others, but beware. These sites are deadly. Some girls died from it. Some of them were even entitled to a digital funeral oration. In Germany and in other countries, some organizations have lodged a complaint against the ProAna websites. Saturday, 2.30 p.m. It's the Techno Parade at Bastille Square in Paris. There are thousands of teenagers like Anaïs, 15, Charles, 15, and Sandra, 14. They came in a group to party. Since the age of 10, they all have mobiles and digital cameras glued to their hands. Oh shit, you're pulling a long face, let's do it again. You can do better than that. Actually, we're doing a photo album so that those who are absent can enjoy the pictures and it's great fun, they get excited. At the slightest opportunity, they shoot to get a scoop and immortalize their life in pictures. As soon as the techno parade comes to an end, Anaïs goes back home with her friends. Wow, okay. The pictures um, represent the trophy of the day. Among hundreds of pictures, they select the most beautiful ones to put them online. The rest of the pictures go to trap. See this one? I took this picture. It's beautiful. When we tell people we're at the techno parade, they go, yeah, but did you take pictures? I go, yeah, I took some pictures. If you didn't take any picture, you couldn't say I was there. It proves that we were there as well. Period. They show their pictures on their blogs, sort of a diary exposed to the public and illustrated by text and pictures. For Sandra, her blog is a part of her life. It's meant to give a picture of our life, of us, what we do, who we are, where we go, what we do at parties, basically how our life looks like. I tell funny stuff. I tell more about feelings. If there's a person I really like, I put an entire article for him on my blog to make him understand how much I love him. Here, for example, I said, because he's my sweetheart, because he means so much to me, because he's such a kind-hearted boy, because he welcomes me, because he adores me and I adore him too. Sandra doesn't only put pictures online. She also plays the role of a real art director. I completely retouched these pictures. I just put this one in black and white. For this one, a lot of brightness to mask my face a little bit because I don't like the look of my face on this photo. 
This is really a poor example I'm going to give you, but for example, if you have pimples on your face, I can work it so that I will make them disappear on the photo. We will highlight your foundation cream, the colors of your clothes. We try to make you look more beautiful. Basically, you must understand that looks are a priority. In 2006, we've counted tens of millions of teenage blogs like Sanders in Europe. In France, one teenager out of two has his own blog. So to speak, we show off a little bit, because we want to show people, for example, how we dress, or that we like to look beautiful. For example, a commercial which incites you to eat a tasty yogurt. Well, with our blog, we incite people to go to our blog and know about us. It's meant to promote myself, my friends, my life. In the past, we learned to know each other over a coffee or a pinball machine. Today, it's no longer necessary to see each other in person to become friends. These blogs and community websites aren't only meeting places, they also represent a crucial economic stake. They also generate considerable income from advertising, and the large media didn't wait long to buy them out, a market which represents hundreds of millions of euros. Charles spends more than three hours a day glued to his computers. Like 61% of teenagers, he prefers the web to television. And what he's most mad about, it's these parodies, and there are thousands circulating on the net. My computer is my world. I can get anything from it. I don't need to go outside to buy a CD at the corner. Everything is there. Music, news, videos, friends, girlfriends, it's all there and that's my world. His favorite activity is online chatting. He communicates online with friends or unknown people. Like millions of teenagers, Charles uses pseudonyms to chat. They use names such as Miss 62, Nice Chick, or Rockstar. Sometimes you talk with five or six people at the same time. If you write each word and letter without any abbreviations, people will zap you. If the person you're chatting with doesn't answer within 15 seconds, it sucks. In short, the computer as well as the mobile are revolutionizing spelling and grammar. Charles' girlfriend Anaïs knows about it. This Wednesday afternoon, she stayed at home to do some revision. Between chatting on the net and sending SMS with her mobile, she forgets her language. I have great difficulties with spelling. There are words I used to know how to spell before I had a mobile, and since then, I have been writing in abbreviations with my cell phone. So I can't write properly. For example, on my mobile, when I mean later, I write it L eight R. If I want to say wait for me, wait normally takes AI, right? Yeah, you're right. But I say W eight. When there's a double consonant, I only put one. It goes faster. 94% of teenagers are equipped with a mobile, so it's high time for an SMS chatting dictionary. At the senior high school of Anaïs and Charles, it's the end of class, and this evening there's a parent-teacher association meeting to discuss this issue. Charles' father is present. Here, the damage caused by virtual communication worries parents. When I look at the pupil's school report book, I'm astounded to find five mistakes per word because it's written in phonetic language. It's nonsense, and they make no effort. When we dare tell them that it isn't written correctly, they say it's useless, it's a disaster.
I used to constantly distribute books. I would see a 14, 15 year old kid and I would tell him, read this, it's good. I don't do it anymore. When I offer a book, they no longer take it. Don't you have a DVD or music? They no longer take the book. They're like addicted. In my opinion, parents are somehow afraid. Because it's the first time that a mass phenomenon is better controlled by youth than by older people. Today, any teenager knows how to use a computer better than any of you. I have a 10-year-old daughter who shows me what to do to search on the web. There are too many teenagers who know how to use that tool compared to the few adults who know how. Consequently, these adults never tried to educate their children by saying, I did the same thing, beware of this or that. Therefore, young people are alone facing this problem. The more parents don't know, the more they're afraid, and the more they're afraid, the more it's uncomfortable. It's possible that today's generation between 15 and 18 years old, including yours, who know about these techniques will hopefully learn to control things with their children, but my generation doesn't know. For adults, it's not easy to find their way and to use their authority in a field where their children are experts. There's a real generation gap. Charles knows it, and he takes advantage of it. Parents can investigate on every part of your life. They can search your bedroom, your wallet, but it's true that parents don't deal with the internet. Charles' computer has a lot of information about him. On the internet, they can find what I say to my friends, what I did last night, what club I went to, the music I listened to, if I watch porn movies, look at my chat pseudonyms and find if I have a girlfriend, whereas in my bedroom, they will find nothing except for a box of condoms and some lubricant, but nothing else. On the internet, they're like stars. His name is Captain Brackmar. In the virtual world, teenagers love him. And tonight, in honor of Captain Brackmar, a party is organized in this Eastern Parisian bar. Tonight's dress code, superheroes. Captain Braquemar became famous because of his parodic hit, Broadcast on the Net. I think you need to keep calm. Why? Because your idol has arrived. Don't pretend you didn't see Actually, it's a concept. It's a shitty hip-hop band. Rap music is cool, but we just fuck around. If people didn't like it, they would say, you definitely suck. But actually, people are shouting, yeah, it kicks ass what you do, so we continue. The most important thing in creation is sharing. This piece isn't just for me and my pals who will listen to it, but me and the 108 millions of pals. It's great because so many people can listen to this piece, and these people represent a great variety of personalities. So it will inevitably echo somewhere, even concerning the wildest shit. Maybe there'll be someone who will say, that's the shit I like. And the young girl that Brachmau was teasing is also in her way a star on the net. Her way to get famous is to show off her body. She belongs to a community on the internet called the Suicide Girls. This website comes from the US. It's meant to show tattooed and pierced young women from around the world who pose nude and convey a punk and rock and roll image. Disons, 
I don't have the feeling that I'm doing something extraordinary. It feels like opening your window when you wake up and 200 people are waiting for you to tell you, we love what you do, it's a form of acknowledgement. It's... <laughs> Today, Ayan and her friend, Raya, organize in their apartment a nude photo session for the Suicide Girls website. I may sound like a pretentious person, but I like to be the talk of the town. It's my way of saying, I'm here, look at me, look how interesting my life is, look how wonderful I am. It gives your ego a boost. I think that's what people are looking for through their blogs or that kind of thing. I think that lots of the people who do that have a narcissistic flaw and need to be told, you're beautiful, it's great what you do, yes, we love you. The Suicide Girls website attracts 500,000 visitors a week, including 43% of girls. For female teenagers, they embody the girl next door, someone you can relate to. I think that for teenagers we represent a sort of icon, because when you're a teenager you're trying to find yourself, you'd like to have an enchanting life, you're fascinated just like when you're 14 and you buy teen magazines and you hang posters on your bedroom walls and you think, oh I would like to be that person. It's inevitably a generation thing, wanting to be famous. For these last years, this kind of concept has never stopped developing, whether on TV or on the Internet. Today's icons are no longer political or spiritual. They're on TV, they make the biggest amount of money, whether they're singers, soccer players, models. They obviously fascinate people by the wealth they generate. Andy Warhol's 15 minutes of fame is long gone. Now with the internet, boundless fame seems to be within reach for everyone. <laughs> Thomas, Laura, Clément, Sandra, Ayan, Brachmar, like the millions of teenagers connected worldwide, they make the future. What if it were only the beginning? For example, with video games, they can create a virtual parallel life for themselves. In these worlds, their virtual double continues to live even when the computer is off. On the website called Second Life, your double can even make money, consume, have sex. It's for real, if you wish so. What would happen if tomorrow our teenagers preferred virtual life in a society made of ups and downs?